My name is Bob Kishore. I've been a member, I don't know, since 2005. But I'm going to first focus on the cordless valves because they were the most efficient way to transfer steam into mechanical work during the 1800s. A guy by the name of George Corliss, who lived, I have to check, 1817 to 1888, he had an invention, and the invention was so good that it got it's his name. And he was sort of the Bill Gates of his time, because uh, he made a lot of money off of his idea. He not only made steam engines, he also licensed the concept to other steam engine manufacturers. Every cordless steam engine has four valves. Two input valves, two exhaust valves. This is always the case. The steam, in, the steam input valves are at the top and the exhaust valves are at the bottom. Now what happens, each valve is shaped in a special way so that they only turn a quarter turn for each rotation of the steam engine. And what that does is that, let's say this valve opens to allow steam to come in and it causes the piston to go this way, turning the flywheel. And then in sequence, this right hand valve opens, causing the piston to go this way. And in proper sequence, the exhaust valves open to exhaust the steam that has expended the energy and the work. So that's all it is. It just goes back and forth. You get a power stroke on both sides of uh, the steam injection. The valves are controlled by a complex series of cams and ratchets, as you can see here. Now this steam engine, the Alice Chalmers steam engine, uh, came to us originally from Mackinac Island in Michigan. It was the entire power source for the island. And it was the power source for the island until about 1948. And thereafter, the Smithsonian acquired it. They put it in storage for 20, 25 years. They, the Smithsonian finally found the Rolf family from Skohari, New York, who acquired the engine. And they had it in pieces for a number of years until in 2001, Ron Rolf donated it to us. And in 2002, it came to us in pieces. Steam engine is a single cylinder, 300 horsepower engine. And it drives a, an alternator. This is this big assembly right here. The alternator is designed to put out 2300 volts, three phase, 50 amps per phase. It is here at idle, running at about 12, 13 RPM right now. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just want to explain what it does. First of all, it has an exciter. It must have an exciter to produce DC to excite the, this is basically a DC, excuse me, <coughs> a DC generator, it puts out 125 volts, 100 amps, and its purpose is to excite the windings in the alternator so that the alternator can produce the 2300 volts that it's designed to do. In order to do this, the engine has to be running at 150 RPM. That's required in order to get the 60 cycle waveform out of the out of the alternator as well as the voltage. Up at the ceiling you see a cover. That was the cover for the counterweight. The counterweight is the assembly that enables smooth operation when the piston travels back and forth. 
We've actually had it up to 140, 143 RPM, and it scared us because the ground started shaping, the parts started, they're loose. This is 100 years old almost. And uh, it made a lot of noise. And we actually broke one of the minor parts that we were able to fix. The basics of the, the engine itself, I said it's a 300 horsepower engine. That means that it requires 300 horsepower of steam in order to function properly. Flywheel is nine tons. The flywheel itself is 12 feet in diameter. The stroke of the, of the piston is 36 inches and its bore is 30, it's 16 inches. It came to us in 1964. It's a smaller machine, it's only need is 150 horsepower in terms of steam. It has a smaller flywheel. It's only 10 feet in diameter. We've calculated it to weigh three and a half tons or so. Its purpose in life was to power a lumber mill. Through belts and what is called the line shaft, which you see up on the top near the ceiling, power was transmitted to, in this case, this was in the basement, up to the third floor where work was done, and planing machines, sawing machines, drilling machines, whatever else they needed to do to process lumber was used. Coming off that line shaft, we have a lathe and a milling machine. Both of them are running at idle. They're doing no work, but they're just trying to demonstrate what a typical factory did, how it got its power, how it transmitted its power in the 1800s and early 1900s. Now, I talked about a right angle drive, and it is gearless. You're welcome to, anytime you want, turn this wheel and watch inside. It's lit so you can see the mechanism inside. There are no gears, and yet this was transmitting, transferring um, many, many foot-pounds of power. This came to us from Wayne County up near Lake Ontario, on the shore of Lake Ontario, where they grow a lot of apples. And this came from an apple storage facility where they refrigerate apples over the year. Ammonia was used industrially for Freon tank. In fact, some, some uh, companies still use ammonia for refrigeration. The steam engine with the wheels is a portable. It's a Woodbury. It was made in Rochester, New York, about 1885. And it is on loan to us from the Rochester Museum and Science Center. This is the kind of machine that would be horse-drawn from farm to farm, so that farmers who had to do work, whether it be threshing wheat or pumping water or doing some other sawing, uh, talk about the smoothness of this Woodbury machine. Here we have two nickels that were positioned on end yesterday or the day before, and they have not fallen down. They're not glued down. Behind this building, there are two boilers. The biggest boiler is the Lucy boiler. It's clearly marked. It's a big silver boiler. It holds 1,500 gallons of water. It weighs about 15 tons. And its firebox is about four foot by eight foot by six foot. Every year it requires someone to get inside and clean it. I want to talk about the Fishkill Corliss. This is the soon to be star of the show of this building. On the north side of the building you will see it mounted. It's a two cylinder 500 horsepower steam engine. On the north side of the building, you will see it mounted on a concrete pedestal. On the south side here, you will see a grooved flywheel. That is the flywheel for that 
engine, and that flywheel is calculated to weigh 18 tons, 16 feet in diameter. The unique thing about the flywheel is that it is grooved, which means that it drives a rope. That's very unusual in the United States because we mostly drove our loads from steam engines with belts. Ultimately, we hope to mount that flywheel on that uh, crankshaft and put it on the two cylinders that are out on the north side of the building. I think I've reached the end of this presentation. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to come on up and ask your question.